Hi, I'm John Lemke from Senate District 31, and I nominate Jim Newberger for the Republican Party endorsement for U.S. Senate. I've known Jim for about 15 years. He has stood up to those who would put him down. What man meant for evil, God turned it for good. He has character to stand behind what he says, and he will do it. I endorse him and stand with him as Mordecai stood with his cousin Esther. Esther 14. 14 is, yet who knows whether you have come to this kingdom for such a time as this. Esther stood against evil. Jim has shown the same attitude to stand against evil and will protect even our little ones and give babies the right to live. We need Jim to be a strong stand against evil and death that was set before us by our unrighteous workers of darkness who are in office now. So stand with me endorsing Jim as our U.S. Senator. My name's Michelle Newberger. I'm Jim's wife. <laughs> when Jim first became involved in party politics, it was not with an eye toward elected office. It was with a sense of civic duty as an American citizen and a service to his fellow Minnesotans. Jim's natural leadership qualities led him to take on more responsibility with the party as the chair of our local BPOU and a deputy chair of CD6. Jim also founded the BPOU Chair Caucus when he saw a need for fellow volunteers to share new ideas and information and to better reach our communities. When redistricting came, our House seat was an open seat. Jim decided to, he would offer to serve as our representative. He was elected easily, and not just because we are a Republican district, but because he is well known as a man of strong moral character who could bear the weight of responsibility that comes with representing 40,000 people. He has proven by his willingness to help individuals in our own district and in other districts, and by his voting record in the Minnesota State House of Representatives that the people of 15B had placed their trust in the right person. So here we are about to endorse our candidate for U.S. Senate. Once again, Jim has offered to serve the people of Minnesota, not for a title, but because the people of Minnesota need a senator. A senator who understands that votes have real consequences for real people. A senator who can and will bear the weight of responsibility that comes with the trust of the people. So it is with pride as a delegate to this convention and a great honor as his wife that I second the nomination for endorsement of Jim Newberger for U.S. Senate. Well, good evening. Oh, you Republicans, good evening. good evening. There we go. I'm going to get my glasses on. Here we go. I'm Jim, and uh, these are my friends, and this is my family. <laughs> I have one question for you tonight, just one. Do you believe in the grassroots? Yeah. Do you believe in the grassroots? Yeah. Ten years ago, I went to my very first state convention. My home BPOU was in the very back row next to my good friends over here in Wright County. Wright County, let's hear ya! <laughs> yeah! From that time forward, I'd worked hard in the grassroots to, uh, to advance our conservative cause. I worked as a volunteer. I was a BPOU chair, a congressional district deputy chair, and a co-founder of the Minnesota BPOU Chair Caucus. Like you, I pounded the signs, I walked in parades, I knocked on the doors, I started a tea party, I attended the meetings and I organized the events, I made the phone calls and I stuffed the envelopes, and I enlisted the help of my family. Yes, I did. And I stood on stages just like this for conservative candidates. I know how hard you work, and I appreciate it. Right here, yes, right here in the grassroots. This is where I come from. Many of you have known me for many years. And it is here before you today. 
as one of your own, I stand and I humbly ask for your endorsement. By the grace of God, I was endorsed in 2012 and I was elected to the Minnesota House. I went right from the grassroots and into the swamp. This year, after three terms, I'm imposing my own term limits and I'm stepping away from a very strong Republican seat because the 12 year reign of ultra liberal Amy Klobuchar must come to an end. Yes. It was in the Minnesota House where I learned how to hunt in the swamp. My first year, 2012, was the beginning of a two year nightmare in Minnesota. The neo socialist DFL had complete control of the entire state government. The DFL wasted no time force feeding Minnesotans their left wing Klobuchar styled hot dish, a nauseating concoction of tax increases, <laughs> regulations, and neo socialism. Their biggest achievement, a toxic dumpster fire known as Obamacare. <laughs> this, yes, you can boo! Yeah. Obamacare! Obamacare, there we go. <laughs> this neo-socialist program bloated bureaucracies and killed patients. Remember, Pre President Ronald Reagan said that socialism works really good in two places. In heaven, where they don't need it, and in hell, where they already have it. <laughs> it was during this dark time that the DFL greatly expanded the rulemaking authority of state agencies. Agencies under the direct control of Governor Dayton's DFL machine. Like a B-rated creature feature, the swamp monsters began to grow. Emboldened by their new power, these giant state agencies wasted no time squeezing the life out of everyday Minnesotans like you and I. They ended sunsets for programs, they increased pointless regulations, they yanked millions of dollars out of our pockets through fees and fines. Big agencies are supposed to serve the people, but the neo-socialist DFL has turned everything upside down. Now the people serve the agencies. This must come to an end on the state and federal level. Because any, any citizen, any citizen who stands up to these agencies, they get squished like an annoying bug. Congresswoman Michelle Bachman was right. She called it gangster government. My three-term fight in the swamp has been extensive, and I've never lost a battle. I'm going to give you three quick highlights. In 2014, the new DFL-led DNR decided to drop the hammer on our farmers. They wanted to ration water. They were squeezing the life out of our hard-working farmers who just want to put food on our tables and feed the world. I stood up to this, and I got them to back off. Second. I was able to stop the DFL-led Department of Commerce when combat vets with PTSD came home from war. They tried to go back to work and instead of helping our veterans, the Department of Commerce revoked their professional licenses and slapped them with fines up to $60,000. I changed the law to give our veterans the help that they need. Yeah, Thirdly, I stood up to the Public Utilities Commission when they helped force an early shutdown of the largest power plant in the Midwest. They had no regard for the hundreds of people that they would force out of work or the economic impact on, social, on central Minnesota. To add in, insult to in, injury, they refused to allow for the construction of a new gas plant to hopefully replace some of those jobs and the lost income. I fought for that. I fought for three years, and guess what? We're getting a new gas plant. <laughs> Folks, when you send me to Washington, I'll go after these massive federal agencies because they are destroying America as we know it. President Trump needs our help, and I look forward to helping him drain the swamp. In order to do this, Minnesota needs to send Senator Klobuchar packing, gone.
She's had 12 years, folks, and now she's asking for six more. For nearly a decade, she has fed the swamp with her 90% pro-Obama voting record. It's time for Minnesota to have a senator who will stand up for America. President Ronald Reagan said, America is the moral force that defeated communism and all of those who would put the human soul into bondage. Therefore, we must stand up for American law. E pluribus unum, out of the many, one. One nation, one people, one law. We must put an end to the current refugee resettlement program, period. We must stop federal funding for any sanctuary city. Minnesota needs a senator who will stand up for our Second Amendment rights. Perhaps Senator Klobuchar needs to be reminded that her, that her fellow Democrat, Vice President Hubert H. Humphrey, once said, quote, the right of the citizens to bear arms is just one guarantee against arbitrary government. It's one more safeguard against tyranny. Minnesota needs a senator who will stand up for life and not seek to destroy it. Minnesota needs a senator who will actually do something for the good folks right here on the Iron Range and clear a path for copper and nickel mining. Polymet must come in here. Yeah. Our workers, they demand a senator who will stand up for energy and jobs and our farmers are praying for a senator who will simply get the government off of their backs. Our future demands a senator who will stand against rising taxes and put Obamacare into its grave. As your next senator, as your next U.S. Senator, I will fight for these things and I will stand up for you. Now some will ask, can we win? Can we win? Yeah. Yes, we can! Yeah. With you, we the polls are shifting to the right. Donald Trump came within one and a half points of winning Minnesota. Trump won five of our eight congressional districts. <laughs> yeah! We must reach all eight of our districts, not by asking three simple questions. I really wish it were that easy. Because if it was, conservative groups would have recruited thousands, thousands of GOP voters years ago. The simple truth is we reach the urban core with real solutions. We close the education gap by allowing school choice and we free up, yes, we free up the billions of potential dollars that are being trapped in our school trust lands. We give people a hand up, not just a hand out, and we develop an environment where people can get a career, not just a job. Finally. We fix the DFL controlled system by ending waste, fraud, and abuse. Can somebody please tell me where $100 million went? Yeah. That has to end. As of today, our campaign has successfully reached out to many multicultural groups. The Latinos, the Koreans, the Chinese, the Russians, the African Americans, and the Jewish community. One note on the Jewish community. They've had it with Senator Klobuchar. She betrayed them when she supported Barack Obama's plan to, to allow Iran to develop a nuclear program. Yeah. Senator Klobuchar, you've got something to answer for here. Now I started this speech asking you if you believe in the grassroots. I respect you and I respect the hard work that you do and I will honor your endorsement. I will not challenge it in the primary. In closing, it's time to choose. We can let Amy Klobuchar feed the swamp six more years, or we can send one of our own to Washington. The choice is before you this day. I humbly ask, I humbly ask for your endorsement for the United States Senate. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Oh.